Everyone take a minute and I want you to read this question here. I'll give you one minute. Actually, this is actually a long one. And it's actually from the 62. That's that reading specialist exam. Now remember, this is a little challenging, a little harder, uh, a little wordier. You notice that linguistic complexity, everything is longer. The, 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 the question is longer. The answers are what, paragraph form? <laughs> I mean, they're longer, right? And so if I say to you, do this in two minutes, some teachers are gonna be like, I can't do it in two minutes. So let's write down two to three minutes. And we understand this is going to be a long one. And what we're trying to do when we read it is identify. Remember our old friend? Remember our friend at the that we were going to meet in the in the for coffee? Remember our good old friend? Here's our friend. You're gonna meet us for a, a, a cup of Joe, cup of coffee here. That's a that's a cup of coffee. Okay. And 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 then Joe is in that coffee store. My friend John. This is my friend John. I actually have a friend, John, very good friend, John. Okay. Uh, my friend, John is uh, there. I'm going to go meet John. And, uh, but there's all these other, these, all these other, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, shapes, <laughs> people that may or may not, they're not my friend. They're, they're very nice shapes, but they're just, just not the friend I'm looking for. Right. That's like your, that's like your A, B, C, D options. We want to be able to recognize our friend when we meet them for coffee, right? So that we can know what to do. We don't want to go around and struggle with every person and be like, are you my friend? <laughs> are you my friend? You're my friend. And that's what we're doing here. What you're really doing in the, with your time is to read this and identify what concept is being tested. So you don't need two or three minutes to do that. So why don't you do this? In your two to three minute read, try in the first 30 seconds to identify your friend. Okay, now you can read. Go ahead. I'll disappear. Pause. What a cool question. I like these questions on the 62 because they're very specific. And you can, if you're a uh, if you're a first grade teacher or a kindergarten teacher, or you can or a second grade teacher, you can visualize what's going on here, right? Okay, so we have here a reading specialist is working with a small group of first grade students. Let's circle first grade. Uh, let's write down six to seven, who who benefit from support with letter sound correspondence. So they're they they need some help. This first grade students they need some help with phonics, right? Specifically, they tend to confuse certain consonant sounds when reading CBC words in isolation or in con or in or in or in connected text. I like that, including b, p, the b, p, k, g, t, d, f, f. So let's just try that again. B, p, b, b, b. That's voiced, right? B, b, p, 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 unvoiced. Uh, k, 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 g, g, g. This is the voiced one. G is the voiced one. G, g, k is not. T, t, d, d is not. F, f, v, v. So I circled the voiced ones. B is voiced. P is not. G is voiced. K is not. D is voiced. F is not. Oh, sorry, other way around. D is voiced, F is T. Okay, you got it, right? Now, I'm hoping that you spotted your friend right away. Like, all you really need to spot your friend is uh, this one right here. Uh, include It's isolating. Remember, we're, we're working with sounds and isolating these sounds, B and P. B, B. That should be like, hey, yeah, hey, my friend. This is your friend. Uh, B, B, A. And P sounds. If you see your B and P friend, well, that just means that it's voiced and unvoiced. You hearing me? And that should be within the first 30 seconds. This is a is this is an activity involving phonics, involving voiced and voiceless sounds. It should only take you 30 seconds to spot your friend. If you're in a room of five people, it should only take you 30 seconds, right? 
Well, right away, you should be like, this is a, a voice and voiceless sound scenario, right? Okay, so it says, which of the following approaches would be most appropriate to use to address their, these confusions? So the students are having difficulty when it comes to decoding, when pronouncing um, sounds with, uh, with the P, the B and the P, or with these voiced and voiceless sound patterns. Okay, all right. Or, um, let's see here. Is this a time to do some Elkonin boxes and do some phoneme graphene mapping? Yes or no? No, that's a phonemic awareness activity. Um, and they, by the way, I love these activities. They're not the right answer, but they're really great. Emphasize phoneme graphene mapping approach using Elkonin boxes to reinforce phonemic awareness and the spelling of constant blends and vowel teams. Wow, completely wrong for this scenario, but what an awesome activity. This is an awesome mini lesson. Okay, team, this is the mini lesson that you put in your essay. If you see them, if you see students having difficulty with constant blends and constant clusters, oh my goodness, constant digress, you could use this language for your essay. Okay, but be, look at all the wonderful stuff. Phoneme graphene mapping, Elkonin boxes, reinforcing phonemic awareness and spelling of these target ideas. Awesome idea, not the right answer, but it's an awesome, awesome mini uh, lesson there. That's not what we're doing now. How about this one right here? <clears throat> uh, use an air writing approach to reinforce print directionality and the distinct features that exist between letters when they are printed in isolation or in, or in word context. Again, another really cool one, air writing. <clears throat> right? Hey, hey. Air writing is a thing. Maybe you've never done it before with your students, but it's a thing. Directionality, print directionality is another key idea. Lots of, ni lots of nice things. Uh, uh, lots of great language in these wrong answers. So the 62, it becomes a really good test to study because it has all these scenarios that are good scenarios, just not the right answers, but they're, they give you a lot of practice with some vocabulary. That's a good thing. The bad thing is, is that if, um, and this is another mini lesson, the bad thing is, is that if you're, if you don't know who your friend is, okay, then you can't tell who you're looking for because air writing and Elkonin boxes were your friend at one time, right? Just not in this particular scenario. Okay. How about this one right here? Applying a tactile kinesthetic approach that involves constructing and deconstructing target words by manipulating Magnet letters to improve the student's uh, motor memory and automaticity in identifying letter sound correspondence. Again, this is a pretty cool, uh, um, pretty cool, you know, activity. Very precise. You can tell that this teacher's done this activity, right? I mean, they definitely have the theory behind it. How successful it was, I'm not so sure, but you definitely can see that in this scenario. And just the time it takes to read this, right? I mean, it's got it's got all the bells and whistles, but it just takes a long time too. These are all good things to study. All really interesting mini activities, but we're looking for our friend. How about this one? Identify letter sound relationships with multi with a multi-sensory approach that focuses on how and where a sound is produced in the mouth and whether it is voiced and unvoiced prompting what you feel, what you hear, what you see. So let me all clear, let me clear this off now. That's the right answer. So when we, this act, this activity right here, um, <clears throat> when you say, P -p -p you really do have to think about, because it's going to be hard. It, um, this is sort of an articulatory activity. You're not really focused on articulating as much as wh where that sound is. So it is about how you, how, how does it feel? Oh, I can feel a vibration. I can't feel a vibration. Uh, what do you hear? It's, well, I hear some vibration going. I hear a little difference uh, in it. What do you see? I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it would be the, I don't know where, how that one fits in, but, but definitely these two right here. And multi-sensory because we're going to be not only saying the words, uh, but we're also going to be feeling to see if we can feel that vibration or not. 
You know, the only clue that they give you, this is a cool activity. The only clue right here is voiced and unvoiced. And if you saw that, I think you can do this in two minutes. Because if you know your friend is voiced and unvoiced, then, um, you know, directionality isn't it. And uh, Elkonen boxes is not it. And uh, magnetic letters is not it. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, and that's how you could do, you could just train yourself to skim these over and look for these target, these target ideas, right? There's plenty of them in there, right? And, and you could cross them out. No, 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 voiced and unvoiced, yes. Okay, team, I know these are hard, okay? And I know that everyone, not everyone's taking a reading special exam here. I gotta do some challenging ones. I'm trying to give you strategies to help you with these longer questions. And I think that the, the sooner you are able to recognize your friend in a scenario, and especially in a longer scenario, the easier it is to be able to cross out answers that don't work. So hopefully you got something out of this one here. This is a great one. Uh, lots of review on this, lots of, lots of stuff on this question. The answer is B, get to review all these things. Okay, uh, multi-sensory approach. Uh, Tactile kinesthetic approach, those are actually the same thing. A tactile kinesthetic approach is a type of multi-sensory approach. Multi-sensory approach is when you're using, um, you know, um, sight, sound, uh, touch. And, and in this case right here, you're feeling your vibration. You're hearing the difference between the voiced and unvoiced, right? Uh, so it is multi-sensory. Um, um, and that is, and, and tactile kinesthetic, that is when you're doing like the Alconan boxes and, or, or, or say the movement and you're, you're moving those things. You're, you have that tactile piece where you're, you're, you're breaking down all the sounds in cat. You're like, -t. so in addition to just like segmenting it in your mind, you're literally like touching a little peg counter and you're moving it down. And that is that tactile piece. And there's a movement piece too. So there's touching and movement to reinforce the phoneme isolation. So team, that would be an example of say it and move it would be a tactile kinesthetic approach if you're doing phoneme segmentation. Okay. All right, just trying to clarify some of this stuff. Hopefully it helps. Team, great question. The answer is B. Let's go to the next one.